on this week's show, the Sun Belt Basketball Tournament begins in New Orleans. We'll have a preview. We'll also take you out to the Baseball Diamond, where Georgia Southern has now won three in a row. And we'll head over to football, where spring practice has begun. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagle's Nest. Welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, the Sun Belt Conference getting underway, the tournament getting underway in New Orleans. The women of Georgia Southern, unfortunately, already bounced from the tournament in the first round. They did have a pretty successful year, to say the least, finishing right there at 500. As for the guys, they'll get things underway. We shoot this on Wednesday. We don't know quite yet if it'll be App, if it'll be Troy. I don't know that it really matters. They split with both of them in the regular season. First of all, the women, briefly, your thoughts on how the season went, even though they didn't finish maybe the way they'd like. Well, Georgia Southern, they were favored to win their first game of the tournament against Arkansas State. It's a Red Wolves team that the Eagles had handled in the regular season. However, things just not going their way. They, they were behind a little bit kind of playing catch up throughout the night just didn't have enough gas in the tank but when you take a step back I think you need to realize that this is a very successful season for the Eagles uh, a bunch of down seasons in a row they have their best record in the better part of a decade this year you mentioned going 500 in conference play and that was after an 0-3 start so this is a team that definitely did the things that you want to see rebuilding teams do they they took steps as the season went along they definitely look like a better team in March than they did in December. And now the real step is gonna be, where do you go from here? When Coach Kip Drown came in two years ago, he had a very young, very inexperienced team and he was able to kind of mold that as they gained experience. He didn't lose too many players in either the last couple of seasons. Now you've got two all-conference players and Angel McGowan, Patrice Butler, they're leaving the program. We saw a bunch of spurts, uh, some sparks from the younger girls this season but going into next season is going to be the next hurdle it's one thing to get good it's another thing to stay good especially when you've got so much talent leaving all right well as for the guys they'll have plenty of their talent coming back next year but of course they love to make a run they're capable of it they've pretty much been able to beat everybody on the schedule at some point they started off a lot hotter than they finished but postseason you start zero and zero and you move on and the good news is there's a three seed and they get a bye in the first round. Yeah I guess you can say it's better to be lucky than good and Georgia Southern didn't exactly play a horrible basketball but the record didn't show that they finished just four and seven down the stretch one and six on the road a little bit concerning when you think about the fact that every game that they have uh, for the foreseeable future out in New Orleans a place where they haven't scored well in each of their first two trips to the uh, Sunbelt Conference Tournament but you get the three seed, more importantly, you get that buy. And when you look at the matchups, I think it works out pretty favorably for Georgia Southern. You know, UT Arlington, they're the odds on favor to win it. They're on the other side of the bracket. You've got Coastal Carolina, South Alabama, teams that didn't play that well record wise, but who seem to be a matchup problem for Georgia Southern. They're on the other side of the bracket. You've got teams in App and Troy, and both of them did manage a, a win against Georgia Southern in their two games this season. But they're more matchup friendly, I guess, more of the same type of team where if Georgia Southern can just play their game, they've proven, like you said, that they can beat just about anybody. Now it's a matter of there are no more do-overs. There's no more let's take a week or two to get the things straightened out. It's time to win and win now if they want to keep their season alive. All right. Well, we had a chance to talk with Coach Mark Byington, some of the players about heading to New Orleans for the Sun Belt Tournament. It's a new start. I mean, we really want to be, um, you know, we got the win of um, Troy and App State, so, you know, we're, we're in a good position right now. We're happy where we're at. But we, um, we know what we need to fix. Um, you know, Coach B, he didn't put it, um, he didn't um, give us an easy, um, you know, schedule um, to start. So, I mean, we, we really got challenged um, in the beginning of the season, but, yeah, we know um, the things we need to fix going into the tournament. Uh, I mean, it's a big thing to us. Uh, had this opportunity to go to the Sunbelt Tournament. Uh, just to play and uh, show, compete with other teams and uh, try to earn spots at the NCAA tournament. I mean, we're in a good position right now. Uh, having a, a little off week, uh, it give us time to prep. I think last year we went in there right away and we had to play. So I mean, a lot of guys wasn't ready. So I think this year we have no excuse since we got the bye week. Well, I feel we're battle tested, and um, I was saying all along, you know, even when we were seven or zero in the league, that when we get to the end of it, we'll add them all up, and. Uh, 
what it shows right now, we finished third in the league, uh, one of the best leagues in the country. And uh, from here on out, they tell us where we start, and now we got to figure out where we finish when we go to New Orleans in a tournament. I, I think if you look at the big picture, uh, we've done everything well at certain times. And uh, some of our weaknesses throughout the year have been second half defense and some rebounding, and we got to fix those things. Um, but if you look at the last couple games, you know, Georgia State, we really guard in the first half. Uh, we did a great job defensively. Uh, we go on the road before that, and the Arkansas State and Arkansas Little Rock, our defense was very good in our rebounding. And so we've done them all. Um, so I just feel like the team's got to be more consistent. And there's just no margin for error. You get the, the Sun Belt tournament, you know, where it's do or die situation. You just can't have an off day, unfortunately. It really feel it's wide open. And that's exciting for, for everybody going down there. Uh, I think six or seven teams have a legitimate chance down there to win the whole thing. And, and the good news is I feel like we're one of them. All right, well, we'll have highlights from the Sun Belt tournament for you next week. Moving on to baseball, Diamond Mike, and we've got the Georgia Southern Eagles. They've been up and down, and, you know, first innings have been a little tough for them, to say the least, on Sunday, uh, where you give up nine runs and still almost came back to win the game. They lose 2-3 or three with Memphis and then rebound against Campbell with a midweek uh, series. Your thoughts on where the Eagles are right now as Sunbelt uh, regular season creeps closer and closer. Yeah, Georgia Southern, I think, is slowly starting to come around uh, at the beginning of the season. The bats really struggling, not too many hits in the first couple of series. Now the hits are there, but they're just not in the right spaces. They haven't been getting clutch at bats when they need it, or at least not all the time. There's been some games where everything's clicking. There's been some games where, as you mentioned, you know, the first inning, a struggle, getting a little bit of a hole. And for this Georgia Southern team, you figure the pitching's going to carry them, and no one's hurt, so I'm not too concerned. You know, pitching doesn't just go away. It's just a matter of getting everybody clicking. And as you said, with Sunbelt play creeping up, that's the big part is just getting everything in order, getting that rotation set up. It looks like there's plenty of arms. The bats are coming around. It's just a matter of being in the place where they want to be, rolling out the lineup they want to roll out come that first series. All right, well, we have a little bit of highlights from Memphis and then back home for a couple of games with Campbell. The Georgia Southern baseball team on the road in Memphis, having split Friday and Saturday. We go to Sunday, and Eagles down 9 nothing. but coming back, Ryan Cleveland, the RBI single in the right. Next up, it's Tyler Martin. He comes through with a two-run single in the left. One run in, and here comes Mason McWhorter. The Eagles eventually get within one, but the Tigers able to hold off the comeback here getting the inning ending double play and Georgia Southern falls by a final count of nine to eight. Georgia Southern hosting Campbell in a midweek series on Tuesday night on the mound. Seth Schumann looking sharp once again here with the inning ending strikeout. Bottom half the Eagles bats get going. The runner on third, Ryan Cleveland, chops one to the right side. That's going to play to run, and it's 1-0 Georgia Southern. The Eagles pick up another run seconds later. Runner on for Tyler Martin. He strokes one to the gap in right center. That's down for the double. 2-0 Georgia Southern. The Eagles continue to add to their lead. Jordan ran with the RBI single up the middle. 3-0 Georgia Southern on top. The Eagles add to their lead in the second. Runner on for Stephen Curry, who lifts this one to shallow center. That's down for an RBI single. And Georgia Southern goes on to take this one by a final count of 8-2. So we move to Wednesday and chase Cullen with a haircut and seeing if he can cut down some runners as well. He gets a start and catches the first man swinging. Then second one looking. He start the game and would go two innings with five strikeouts. In the fourth, one on for Mason McWhorter. To deep center, this one just short of being a home run. It's off the wall, and it's 1-0 Eagles. With the bases loaded, Logan Baldwin then with a chopper. The Campbells try for the double play. Baldwin beats the throw to first, and it's 2-0 Georgia Southern. In the fifth, Matthew Barefoot. Gets this one through for the Camels, tying the game at two. But later, this one down the line. The Camels score six in the inning. 
But in the eighth, Georgia Southern down eight to six. Ryan Cleveland, the batter. He takes this one up, up and away to right center. The three run homer gives Georgia Southern the lead and they win by that score. The final of nine to eight. Next up for baseball, three game series on the road at their former Southern Conference foes, Elon this weekend. Well, we also have football coming up, spring practice beginning. We had a chance to talk with Tyson Summers about what he thinks uh, coming up into spring practice. A uh, big, big focus and emphasis for us over the last eight weeks uh, that has been really important is just focusing on the details. Uh, big, big saying that we've had again is trying to make sure that we are focusing on the root um, and everything that we do and making sure that everything that we do, that we are attention to detail and, and everything that we have. And, and, and again, accountability. And that's what we've been looking for um, with everything that we do to this point in time, whether it's the weight room, academics, and how we are trying to organize our groups and each other. Uh, and again, really excited about how the last eight weeks have gone. More excited about being able to look forward to the next uh, six week period of time, but five weeks of spring practice as we move forward from there. There is a energy because we are. We've got any time that you have uh, guys that are coming back, and, uh, and we did. We played with a lot of young guys at times last year, but we certainly had a large number of seniors, so we will. We'll have a young football team this year, uh, and they know that, um, and we certainly understand that. It does not mean that we are inexperienced. What it does mean is that we have some young guys, and anytime you have that, young guys that have play with a chip on their shoulder, young guys play with an energy, young guys are constantly in a competitive mindset, and young guys are, are constantly in a mindset of trying to make sure that they are proving, some, proving someone wrong, and that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, the things that we got to continue to make sure that we're doing, you've got a young football team, everybody's got to carry their weight. Everybody's got to be able to make sure that they're handling uh, their, their own issue, and then we've got to be able to have uh, power in our units of, e of each position because, again, a lot of times there is natural leadership built by age, um, and, and that's not really what we have. We have some natural leadership because we have natural leaders in our group, but we're trying to make sure that everybody is bringing each other along uh, as we go through it. And Mike, before we go, we want to congratulate the golf team once again. They finished sixth in a pretty good field as they prepare for the Schenkel, which will begin next week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Things get underway with the youth clinic on Wednesday afternoon. So if you've got to get a chance, go out there and uh, get some tips from some of the best collegiate golfers. Great field. You got number one and number two in the country coming. We'll preview that a little bit more for you next week. Well, for now, that's it for Mike Anthony. I'm Josh Aubrey. Thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.